Hello astronomy students, this is Mr. Stockbridge and we're going to take you on as quick a tour of Sky Safari as we can manage. There are a lot of different features in here and so I'm going to try and keep this as quick as possible but it's still going to take a little bit of time, just be forewarned. Alright, let's go ahead and dive in. Here you see a live screencast of my particular device. We're going to start with settings. So come on down here to the settings tab. We're going to go through these one at a time. Let's start at the top and again I'm going to try and keep it quick. Date and time, there's only one thing you need to really watch out for here at the beginning of the course and that is right here. You need to make sure that your automatic daylight savings time is checked. Outside of that, it's always easy to change your day and time settings by coming into here which we're going to have to do for a number of the different assignments. You can do it from the main screen as well but this is a second place that you can do it. All right, location. Come on, computer, wake up. Location. On the main screen, your location is always going to be shown up here in the upper left-hand corner, and your time is up here. But if you want to change your location, this is where you go over in the settings. Put in your coordinates. The elevation doesn't matter too much it's really not going to affect what we're doing in this course so don't worry too much about the elevation but when you set your coordinates do be very careful that you have the correct hemisphere set because there's a huge difference between northern and southern hemisphere and a very big difference between eastern and western hemispheres so watch out for those further down on the screen here if you want to choose your location from a list of places instead of typing in coordinates it'll take you through by country by city many many options listed here. You can also do it on a map. If there is a location that you want to save because you know you're going to reuse it a lot of times like we're going to do this semester, you'll type in your coordinates up here and then you're going to save user-defined location and that way for example your house or wherever it is will be a quick link in here. No matter where we are during the semester, if you are outside and you're like, you know what, I don't need the assignment settings, I just want to know what's up in the sky above me. You can always click the Use Current Location button and it will read the GPS from your device and it will reset all coordinates and time zones and everything to where you are standing on the globe. Moving down, coordinates. Not a whole lot to say here, but do make sure that you have the horizon coordinate system checked. Precession doesn't matter. We're going to look at formats. Formats is important. Make sure that you have AM, PM checked, and this setting right here is generally the best. This is how you want to choose your date setting. And then make sure you check the first option in both the altitude azimuth section and in the right ascension declination section. Ecliptic latitude, blah blah, that really doesn't apply to us this semester. All right, appearance and behavior, there's really nothing here. One thing you might want to do though is turn your notifications off. Just depends on if you want your device chirping at you when something happens or not. Horizon and sky, this is semi-optional. Um, I like to see the horizon in the sky. I like to see it with the panoramic image. You can choose which image you want to have used, and that's what this bottom list is for here. You do absolutely need to make sure that the show cardinal points option is checked. Cardinal points meaning north, south, east, and west. And it'll also zoom in and give you, you know, northeast, southeast, those kind of things as well. So make sure you check that. Solar system surfaces, show the planets, show the phases, show the atmospheres. This stuff isn't going to be too critical, so just take a quick glance here and we're going to move on. Stars, this is important. We do want to obviously see the stars. The magnitude limit that I want you to set for this course is 5.0. That's a fairly dark sky. The human eye can see stuff that is fainter than that. However, most of you guys don't live in places where you're going to see dimmer than a magnitude 5. So this is a good setting. 
Make sure you show the names, proper names, Greek symbols. Deep sky magnitude. Show the objects, show the images, show these, so show basically all the different types of images or types of objects, I'm sorry. Your magnitude limit should be set to approximately 7.4. That's dimmer than the naked eye can see. There's a whole lot more you can see with binoculars and telescopes, but your screen is going to get really crowded. And so for the sake of ease, 7.4, 7.5 is a fairly good number to start with. Milky Way. I like to see the Milky Way. I like to see the Milky Way realistically, so I have these checked. But you're welcome to do either of these other ones. That's totally fine. Constellations, this is important. You do want to show constellations and you do want to see the modern lines. That's the modern shapes. And if you wanted to see the boundaries from one constellation to the next, you could check this, but that's optional. You don't really need to worry about that too much. Last thing down here is grid and reference. And this one is critical. You do want to show the grid and specifically you want to show the equatorial coordinates. Equatorial meaning right ascension and declination. Celestial equator is optional. Ecliptic path is mandatory. You definitely need to see that. So make sure that's checked. Also make sure that you check the zenith and the nadir. Those terms will become familiar as we get a little deeper into the course. But do, do make sure that you have those checked as seen on the screen here. Everything else over here in telescope and files doesn't really apply to us, so let's go back to the main screen. You can search for any object that you want using the search option here. Advanced search is a very, very helpful place, but you can also find things fairly quickly just by using all these different options over here on the left hand side. Now one thing to look out for is when you're looking for particular stars, particular objects, I'm going to pick on stars. So let's say I'm going for named stars. Okay, it's going to bring up a big old list and that's not exactly helpful. So let's just say I was going to do a search for some bright star. All right, so we're going for Regulus. And it'll pull up all this information. Bunch of stuff over here on the left-hand side. I want you to take a look at one thing here. See, visual magnitude, we have two different numbers listed. Well, how can a star have two different brightnesses? A number of bright stars that you're going to see are actually not single stars. Regulus is a good example. It's a double star. And what that means is that you have two stars that appear to be very, very close to each other in the night sky. And they look like they're the same, but they're not. Or they look like they're related, but they're not. So whenever you have a double star and a question on an assignment asking about a double star, make sure that you always pick the brightest member of the double. So in this case, we would pick the positive 1.4 if we were doing something. Over here, there's still a lot of stuff in this information section. Here it gives you the coordinates. It tells you when it rises, when it sets, when it's at its highest point in the sky, which is what transit is always about. It gives you a number of different things here. And just know that there's a lot of information that you can look for. I'm not going to go through that in great detail because we'll take that a piece at a time as it becomes important and relevant in the course. All right, back to the main list. The advanced search is a very, very helpful feature. One of your assignments is going to deal with that right away. So you can pick by object types. You can pick certain parts of the sky. Or if you're like, hey, I only want to see objects that are this brightness. Well, you can put that in. If you want to do it in a certain range, like I want to know between, let's say right here on the screen, something in Leo over here. I want it to be between 10 hours right ascension and 12 hours right ascension. Well, that's where you put this. Whoops, sorry, wrong spot. Down here. 
and let's say we just want to have the visible, the really bright stars, that's how we would set it. A lot of different settings you can do here. You can restrict it to a particular constellation and then you just say, all right, go ahead and do this advanced search. So you'll be using that a lot. All right, moving on, you can zoom in a lot on, on things here. So just know that there's lots and lots to see. So let's go ahead and, you know, like we'll wander over here. You'll see a number of different symbols popping up. Those will become clear the deeper we get into the course. Whoop, battery's getting low. All right, let's go ahead and move on to a couple other things. Let's say that there's an object that we want to look at. You're like, okay, there's Pollux over there. Well, let's go ahead and bring him to the center by clicking the center button. If there's more information you want to know about him now that you've tapped on him, all you do is you hit the info button. And all of that same information from the search window pops up right here as well. Some of the other things down here, the time button. If you don't want to go to settings, you can always fast forward on your time here. Right now you see I have it in real time. See how minute is selected here? So if I tap this button right here, I can fast forward a minute at a time. If I hit this arrow right here, I'm going to go into an animation which steps forward in one minute increments. and so you can watch it moving. You can still zoom in and out as it does that. To stop the animation, you simply click on this again. If you want to do something by more than a minute, if you need to jump by larger amounts of time, just hit the minute section over here or whatever unit's there. It'll give you options. So let's say I want to skip and I want to see what it's like tomorrow, skipping one day forward at a time, then now every time I click this button it's going to jump forward one day. And so you can see objects change over time. If you want to speed it up, again you can do the animation going forward or backward. Now let's say you're trying to watch an animation and the object you're interested in drops down below the horizon. You can always go into settings and fix that a little bit. Where'd it go? Horizon and sky. And just say, hey, instead of seeing the horizon as a panorama, I want to see it as one of these other things. So let's go translucent. So now I can see what the moon is doing, even though it's below the horizon, so I couldn't see it in real life, but I can still see it on the screen. Okay, other things. Scope, don't worry about because we're not controlling telescopes with this app, although that is possible. Orbit, eh, we're not going to use it. Night is a fun one. So when you're out observing the night sky and you're using Sky Safari to try and find objects, you don't want to ruin your night vision with this glowing box glaring back at you. So hit the night button and everything will turn red to preserve your night vision. Now this particular tablet that I have does not have a compass attached to it or programmed into it. But normally, if, especially if you're on a phone, there will be one more icon down here for compass. And what that'll do is that will turn the compass on. And so wherever it is that you point your device, it's going to tell you exactly what you're pointing at. So if you hold it up and you point it a particular direction, you'll know what your phone is directed towards. Okay, I think that's it. I know there's a lot more stuff in here, but again, the battery is about to die. Oh, last, last thing, real quick, and that is the coordinate grids. So you can see that I've got these coordinate grids here. These are the right ascension declination. Notice that these are curved lines and that your numbers are always going to be displayed around the borders. So this curved line is 70 degrees 
uh, declination, positive 70. Here's positive 60. The lines that are coming like spokes out of a wheel here, these are your right ascension. As you zoom in, these numbers will change. It'll automatically change the grid to help you zoom in as much as possible on whatever coordinates you're trying to find. So that'll come in handy for one of your assignments as well. All right, I've covered all of the really important stuff. This has taken longer than I thought, but I hope this is helpful to you. So go ahead, dive in, start using Sky Safari. If you have questions, please catch me or your classmates on Skype, or you can shoot me an email. But again, Skype is where I'll be able to get back to you a little bit more quickly. Have fun with Sky Safari, guys. It's a great tool. It'll take a little while to get used to, but you'll enjoy it once you get the hang of it.